Hello and welcome back to this APM PFQ series on project management where we are looking at the project fundamentals qualification from APM and this is to get you get you up to speed as fast as we can with some of the concepts so that you can prepare more effectively for sitting that PFQ exam. In this video we're going to be looking at projects, programs and portfolios. So first of all, let's start off by defining what we mean by a project. So on the screen here, you can see some examples of the types of things that make a project a project as opposed to any other kind of thing. So first of all, um, we have uh, we're planned decommissioning or disposal of something. So it's planned, um, addressing a problem or an opportunity. So we're looking at something, what could we do differently? How can we fix this, stop this happening again? We have planned objectives. So we decide what it is we want to achieve and we plan how to achieve that. Every project brings change. If your project isn't changing anything, then you're just doing administrative paperwork. You're not actually producing anything. You're not making any difference. Uh, projects also have a set budget. So rather than coming from capital expenditure and you just keep spending until it's gone, we work out how much our project is going to cost to deliver. We agree that budget and then we deliver the project using that agreed budget. A project is also something that is transient. and By that we mean it has a defined start and end point. We know because we've planned at what point we say, that's it, the project is done, it's completed. So that might be we've built the house, the new process is in place, we finished our research project, whatever that may be. And finally, the last one we've got on here is the fact that every project is unique. So even if you have built a house last year and you're going to build another house to the same plans, this project will be a unique endeavor because all of those environmental factors may have changed. So in the previous video, when we were looking at the environment around our project, things could be different. We might have different issues with um, getting our resources. We may have different political issues, different legal challenges, and all sorts of things like that, that makes this project unique, even if it is similar. So let's look at some examples of what constitutes a project. So building a shed, so you may do this at home um, on private property, um, but you are going to have an idea of what you want to build. You know when it's going to be finished. You are going to set aside money and work out how much is this going to cost you. Uh, and it's going to meet all those criteria we've just looked at. Uh, Organising a wedding or other large event, exactly the same it's going to meet that criteria for us we're going to have a set budget we know when it's actually going to be completed we're going to be planning specifically for that and every wedding is unique of course some work workplace type examples upgrading your company IT network you know what you want to achieve you know why you want to achieve it you're going to set aside a budget and you know when that's going to be completed Upgrading your manufacturing equipment, so that could be retooling existing machines, that could be purchasing new equipment, replacing old ones, moving some things to 3D printing technology, uh, and such things like that uh, would all constitute a project. And the last one we've got on here, because we often talk about construction and making things when we talk about project management, because they're easy to visualise. But often projects are more about process change and the, um, the way that we do stuff, procedures. So developing a new HR recruitment process, again, we know that we're going to end up with a new process that we're going to put into place. Uh, and we know what the problem is we're trying to solve by overhauling that process. And it may be we're spending a lot of money on recruitment. We have high staff turnover and part of this process is to look at are we finding the right candidates are we engaging with them within those first few months correctly and effectively to make sure that they stay all to cut costs save time on our recruitment process so we can look at the differences between a project 
and what we call business as usual or BAU. So business as usual is anything that isn't a project. It's your everyday activities. Stacking shelves in a supermarket, business as usual. Processing invoices as part of your company, it's business as usual. Putting together that monthly report for the board of directors, that's business as usual. So we can look at these five different areas of projects and business as usual to help define those two differences. So what is the purpose of a project? It is to achieve objectives and then terminate. So we end that project once we've achieved them. With regard to timescales, it's a temporary endeavor with a predefined start and end point, as we've said. Regarding outcomes, we're producing a unique product or service. So a unique procedure that we've not had before, a unique building that we've not built before, etc. When it comes to people, we tend to have our project teams as temporary teams that have been put together specially to deliver this particular project. And then they go back to their normal uh, daily job. From a management point of view, project managers are there to run that temporary team and only under the, uh, under the heading of that project. Once that project's completed, they move on potentially to a new project, but their management responsibility comes to an end with that project. So how does this differ from business as usual? So where projects achieve objectives and terminate, Business as usual is about sustaining organization business purpose. So that's keeping everything going. That's the normal transactions, the normal sales activities, the normal reporting, the normal engagement with your customers and your clients. Where a project is temporary with defined start and end, business as usual is ongoing. It has no defined end point. We will keep doing what we are doing because that's how we make our money. That's how we stay compliant. Um, with no expected end to that. Whereas a project has a unique product or service, business as usual is repetitive service, repetitive results. We're doing the same thing every day. Now that's not to say that we can't use some continual improvement processes to improve that everyday activity, um, but a project would be a standalone piece of work to improve those things rather than continuous improvement. The lines can be a little bit blurred in there. Where we have temporary teams in a project, business as usual, you have a normal formal structure to your organization. You work for the sales department, you work for the finance department, the HR department, and you have your regular manager, your regular duties. And talking of that, the final one here, we have management responsibilities just for the duration of the project as a project manager, whereas in business as usual, we have a position that is the manager frequently of a department, but it doesn't have to be departmentalized. Um, but the idea is, is that manager will be there forever. Even when people leave, they'll be replaced and we're going to keep that management position. So those are the key differences between projects on the left and business as usual on the right. So part of our job as a project manager, we are going to change something. We've got a specific budget to do it. We've got success criteria. So how do we know our project's going to be successful? And we've got a defined amount of time um, in which to deliver all of those things. So we've got one core document that sits at the center of all of, all of these, and it's called our scope. So if you think of things like a microscope, a telescope, a rifle scope, any of those words that got scope in, it's about focus. It's about what's in target and what's out of target. So our scope is a detailed close up look at what we are actually trying to achieve. And we're trying to make sure that we deliver that. So our target, we're going to try and deliver that taking into account how long that's going to take, how much it's going to cost, and the quality of those things we're going to produce. There's, you know, If you're putting together a building, you might be able to do it quite cheap and quite quickly, but 
is it going to meet the building standards of quality? Are your customers going to be happy that their roof leaks on day one? So a big part of a project manager's job is balancing time, cost and quality to ensure that we're doing it as cheap as possible without taking too long, but we're also managing to hit quality targets. One of the biggest challenges in project management is generally your organization will say to you, no, there's not enough money to do it like that. You'll have to do it cheaper. So if we're going to lose money, how's that going to impact? We might be able to do it cheaper if we drop quality, or we might be able to do it cheaper if we take longer to do it because we've got fewer resources, fewer people, therefore it takes longer to achieve. So it's about that balance between those things. Uh, the same with time. So if we've got a limited amount of time, we need to get it to market, we need to get that implemented ASAP. It could be that because time is a limiting factor, we can cut corners on quality. So we can get it done quicker because we're not taking time to check things properly. Or we could add more money to our budget because we can bring in additional resources to speed up the process, additional people to do tasks or whatever that may be. So it's a balance between those through three things. And there's a saying in project management, time, cost, quality, pick any two. <laughs> you can either have it on time to the quality you want, but the chances are you're going to go over budget, or you can have it on time to budget, but quality is going to suffer. That's the real challenge where your experience comes into play of being able to balance those three things to deliver that scope. Of course, what we also have to bear in mind is while that is going on, is we have these external influences coming from the environment. So political challenges, uh, the um, changes to legislation, environmental law, um, all of those kind of things that may well put extra pressure on our quality or on our time or on our costs. And it just makes life even more challenging. But that is why project managers are so highly valued for their skills and experience to be able to still deliver that scope even under all these pressures. So let's talk a bit more about the differences between projects, programs and portfolios. So project management itself is the appropriate application of processes, skills, tools, knowledge, and that really important experience in order to achieve our specific objectives, documented written down objectives, to create a change in our organization, the way that it operates, so that we can get some benefits from that. Now we have to do that within accordance to all of our rules that our organization lays down as well as legislation and within any additional parameters. Now, as we move through these videos we'll talk a lot more about those parameters, constraints and requirements and we'll cover those. But also we're going to talk more in the future about acceptance criteria which is simply put what do what do we need to do to ensure that our results are going to be acceptable by the end users, by our client, by our customers? So that's project management. It's all about the application of our skills, tools and knowledge in order to be able to deliver the planned activities that create change. Now programs are slightly different. So they're a bigger scope than projects. They are often, although not always, a collection of different projects and business as usual activities that together deliver change. And it's generally much more strategic. So building your garden shed is a standalone project. If you were landscaping an entire estate, which is going to include some outbuildings and putting in a lake and rewiring electricity, you know, for those outbuildings, you could find it becomes very, very complex and you've still got visitors coming to see the gardens at the same time, which is business as usual. You've got a lot of things going on all at the same time and it's good to have one person in charge making sure that the business as usual can go ahead and change slowly as those projects come to fruition and get delivered as well. That's where you would have a program manager to be able to do that. 
So they typically combine new developments alongside those existing business as usual operations. And there's an example on the bottom of the screen here for you about a significant IT infrastructure change. So if you think we're going to update our desktop machines and our internet provision and our Wi-Fi connectivity and our servers and ability to do backup, there's a number of different things there but you still need the business to operate while all of that is going on. You can't just turn off the IT infrastructure. So program manager would be making sure that all those individual projects, as well as those business as usual activities, are as harmonious as possible. So let's take that up one step further to portfolio management. So portfolios are a collection of programs and projects that can be monitored and controlled together to make sure that we're meeting those strategic objectives. So these are higher level again. Now what's really important to remember is this is the PFQ. This is the project fundamentals qualification. It's about becoming a project manager and being able to do that well. We don't really go anywhere near program management. We don't go anywhere near portfolio management. But this is included in the curriculum by APM because you may find yourself running a project or as part of the business as usual crowd that is itself part of a program or part of a portfolio. So it's really important that you understand where you sit within that structure and, and why as a project manager you've then got a program manager well who are they what do they do so that portfolio manager who might have multiple programs multiple projects underneath them okay they are there to balance resources and risks across all of those activities so the larger scale the more complex it is the more useful it is to have these people higher up who are looking at the big picture as a project manager, you are focusing on delivering your part of the overall big picture, your project. But we need somebody who's keeping an eye on the whole thing and making sure there's synergy across all those activities. And a big part of portfolio management is ensuring our business as usual activities aren't negatively impacted by all of this change going on around us. So they need to make sure we're still generating revenue, we're still satisfying our customers. So we can visualize this in this screen here um, where within our organization we could have let's start on the right hand side at the bottom right we've got our standalone projects and again uh, for the PFQ this is where we're kind of thinking of being this is planning that one wedding this is building that one shed this is overhauling that one HR process a standalone project the project manager is in charge of that now slightly interestingly um, APM referred to the fact that standalone programs exist. However, in the definition of programs, it also talks about the fact that them being a collection of projects and business as usual. So, can a program exist without projects? APM's diagram here would suggest that you can exist as a program without a project. However, the study guide very specifically says that a program consists of multiple projects and possibly business as usual. So there is a contradiction there. I personally always have thought of programs as being collections of projects and business as usual activities. So they are aligned in some way that when all of those projects in that program together give the overall completed change that gives us the overall benefits so just bear in mind there is a conflict there uh, within within two pages within the study guide itself uh, if you want to look those up that is uh, page 14 and 15 in the study guide on the left is a little bit more useful so we're talking within our organization where we have this large overarching portfolio and within that portfolio, we may have a series of standalone project as well as business as usual. But that portfolio also might contain one or more programs which may contain one or more projects. So you get this nesting effect, a standalone project, a project that may be part of a program, a project that may be part of a program 
that may itself be part of a portfolio. But your project can also be just part of a portfolio without also being inside of a program. And you're kind of thinking, well, which is it? Where does it sit? The truth is, every situation is unique. Every project is unique and every organization is unique and their situation is unique. So there's a lot of flexibility within the APM structure of how you might utilize a program manager or a portfolio manager to control a series and group of projects. For the exam point of view, this is the diagram that you need to remember and think about, this left hand side especially. Projects may stand alone, they may be directly part of a larger program, they may be directly part of a larger portfolio, but they could also be part of a program which is itself part of a portfolio. So apologies that that's a little bit confusing subject. Uh, again, page 14 and 15 of the study guide. You can read that for yourself. Um, that might make that a bit clearer for you. So this section is now complete. So we're just looking at what is a project, what are what's the role of a project manager, and how projects tie in with portfolio and programs. So again, quite a short one. I hope you found this one useful. It probably are giving you more questions than it's actually answered. Um, but again, we will come back and look at some examples of how we actually use these tools in the real world to deliver projects. We'll do that after we've finished all the content. And hopefully that will make some of these things a bit clearer for you. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it's been useful. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.